so we have uh, Sister Katie Susie, we have uh, mm-hmm. Brother Matthew all sitting in judgment on Laura, who sends in today's tale. Father Simon and the Holy Collective, as the weather improves and thoughts turn to maybe finally being able to take a holiday abroad, mm-hmm. I wish to confess to a holiday incident that occurred ten years ago when my daughter was seven and my son was ten. We'd been on a lovely holiday to Menorca, where the sun had shone and we had made many happy holiday memories. The only fly in the ointment, as it were, was an issue with our flights. Wanting to keep the cost of our family holiday down, we chose to fly with a budget airline who were not well known for their quality customer services. Okay. Sit there, shut up, stop talking. A sandwich, 20 pounds. <laughs> right. you, get the, you get my drift. Yeah. We refused to pay extra for pre-booked seats. And on the flight out, our crew tried to insist that my seven-year-old daughter sat on her own at the back of the plane as there were no seats together. It took a standoff. We were literally refusing to sit down by myself, my husband and my son before a solution could be found. Concerned about a repeat of this on our way home, we ensured we arrived extra early at the airport. So we were near the front of the queue to board. The flight was a bit delayed. And it was very tedious to just have to stand around and wait, but we did. Bored by waiting so long, I started to listen to the couple who were in front of us in the queue. They were going on and on about the awful holiday they'd just had, complaining about elderly relatives, Bob and June. It'd been like a couple of potatoes, walking slowly everywhere they went and dragging the mood of the holiday down. Miserable faces, they said. Boring company, they said. Never paid for anything either, they said. They vowed never to come away again with these people, these family members ever again. Suddenly the gate opened and the queue began to move. From nowhere appeared about 17 relatives of the couple in front of us. There were aunties and uncles, grandma and granddad and an assortment of other relatives. They appeared to think that a place in the queue had been saved for them. At this point I saw red. If all those people jumped the queue, we would be back in the situation we had on our outward flight. So I stepped up and very loudly and to the utter mortification of my family said, I'm sorry, there's a queue here and you need to join the back of it. Over there, yes, you see the back of the queue, that's where you're going. Well, as you can imagine, this did not go down well. One woman, I think the mother, said it was fine as a place was being saved in the queue for all of them by the couple in front of us. Oh, really, I said, and then went on to tell them exactly what this couple had been saying about them. (laughs) Where are Bob and June then? Oh, right. Well, you should know that they hated being on holiday with you. Walking around with you was apparently like walking around with a sack of potatoes. They said you were miserable company, boring people, and mean with it and never bought a thing. Well, as you can imagine, this caused a mighty row to break out within the family, and they stepped out of the queue to shout at each other. (laughs) Job done, and we got our seats on the plane together. Smart thinking, huh? Anyway, says Laura... I seek forgiveness not from the awful cute jumping family. They deserve what happened. But from my husband, my son and daughter. (laughs) Who to this day still get nervous if we're in a queue. (laughs) And it looks like someone is going to push in. Mm. I have assured Um. them that this was a one-off. But forgiveness from yourselves and your listeners might help them truly believe me. I'm not quite convinced it's a one-off, because if you've done that sort of thing before and you've seen how it works, then maybe you're going to try it again. Anyway, my guess is that Laura is going to get a lot of public understanding and public forgiveness, but we'll find out. First of all, our producer and sister, Katie, is going to speak uh, with a voice of moral authority. Thank you. Um, I mean, I have no time for queue jumpers. Obviously, we're, we're British. I love a queue. I respect that. But... My issue is, in order to avoid that, you could have paid extra to pre-book. Like, you could have... There was another way to ensure that you had the seat. Why should you do that? To, well, otherwise you've caused an argument with a family that you just didn't need to do. You kind of meddled in their mm-hmm. business. Gives me the same the same energy as people that are always standing up to be the first off the flight, and they really stress me out. So I'm sorry, <laughs> Laura. You're not forgiven. Okay. All right. Well, yes. some harsh words there. Uh, brother from another gunner? I definitely... Signed and sealed, I am forgiving here. And I don't think any right 
right-minded person <laughs> is going to disagree with us. <laughs> definitely, definitely forgiven. Oh, the things I've thought about people who queue jump in front of me, it's far worse than what Laura's done here. Absolutely forgiven. Uh, the family had it all coming to them. Unlucky sunshine. Not having two... Two people do not save the place for 17. No. That's the rule. I think it is. The, I, th- I think most people go, if you let one person in, find two people, mm, but 17. 17, no I don't think so. No. And-